The new Unity 2019.1 is finally released and is loaded with the latest HD Render Pipeline version 5.13. They have added tons of new features and improvements which we are gonna cover in this video. We will also cover some of the new features in the lighting workflow. So without wasting your time, let's get started. The first new feature I wanna talk about is the Render Pipeline Wizard. You can access it by going Windows, Analysis and Render Pipeline Wizard. This wizard will help you to configure your project setting to work correctly when using high definition render pipeline. It basically highlights incorrectly configured item and provide fix button to correct them. You can also set up new custom scene using this wizard. For instance, by using this fix button, it will automatically change your color space from gamma to linear, which is very essential in order to work in HD render pipeline. You can also fix all the problems in one go by using this fix all button. As you can see, it has automatically created a post-processing profile, default render setting, and a default scene root and HDRP asset and applied them in proper slot. But I still wonder why the screen space reflection are still not supported by the HDRP. But wait. Yeah, now it's much better. The next big improvement is that in 2019.1, post-processing is directly integrated in HDRP which means you don't need to add a separate post-processing layer and post-processing volume to use post-processing effects. For instance, in the camera you have direct options to choose which anti-aliasing you want for your scene. Before this, you have to add a post process layer and make a few changes to add anti-aliasing in your camera. Kudos to Unity for this huge improvement. You can now use real-world physical setting on your cameras such as sensor type, ISO, shutter speed and film gate. This will help you to simulate real-world camera values in your 3D renders. This will also provide you much better depth of field and motion blur effect. This 8-bit tethering option is very helpful to smooth out gradient and remove 8-bit color bending. The other post-process effects such as exposure, color correction, bloom, ambient occlusion, etc. are now can be directly added in the scene setting. You will also find an improved version of color grading from post-processing version 2. They have also divided color grading in different subcategories to give you much more control for color correction and to reduce cluttering the inspector. I also want to mention that the new post-processing settings are not compatible with post-processing stack version 2, which means you have to reauthor all the post-processing when you upgrade to 2019.1. It also means that post-processing stack version 2 is no longer supported in high definition render pipeline. They have also completely updated some post effects such as Bloom now uses a threshold based on pre-exposed value. This means that only objects that are overexposed will bloom instead of the objects that are above a specific intensity. In simple words, this will provide you realistic bloom effect in your scene. Depth of field has been completely reworked. You can now choose to use physical camera or manually adjust the focus setting. It gives you separate control over near and far blood effect. And by using the physical setting on your camera, you can easily set the number of blades, their curvature, barrel clipping, and anamorphism. Motion Blur has also completely reworked to improve the quality and performance and will provide you much more precise and wider blurs while reducing artifacts. You will also find improved film grain effect in this new HDRP. You can now choose different types of noise profile and even use a custom noise texture. Also you can see a real-time animated preview of your noise, which looks really great both in scene and game view. They have also added a new Panini projection effect which is also used in their Unity's latest Heretic demo. Panini projection is basically used to adjust your perspective view for very wide angles. There are some other HDRP improvements which I also want to mention, such as volumetric fog now has been optimized and it's more precise, diffusion profile for subsurface scattering has changed with 2019.1, previously the diffusion profile list in each project was limited to 16 profile. Diffusion profile are now individual assets that can be shared, distributed, and there is a limitation of 16 profile per view. To upgrade your project from 2018.3 to 2019.1, for high definition under pipeline, Unity has also released a guide. In this guide, you will also find solution for common issues which you may have while upgrading your project. I will give a link in the description for this guide. And finally, anti-aliasing for scene view. To use it, go to edit, preferences, HD render pipeline, scene view anti-aliasing and choose the anti-aliasing you want. Let's also have a look at some of the new features in lighting workflow in 2019.1. The first big improvement in lighting is that rectangular area light now support cookie and approximative area shadows. It also supports shadow mask mode which means now you can bake high quality soft shadows while keeping the specular highlights. Now every light in unity can cast shadows except the tube light. Don't worry tube, you will also get shadows very soon. 
Emissive properties on both lit and unlit shader have been improved to support EV100 or luminous unit with an additional exposure weight control. This control allows you to force an object to bloom even when correctly exposed. For instance, now you can make any object glow even in the bright daylight. And with this new emission node, you can enable the effect for baked or real-time GI. In the new high definition render pipeline, real-time planar reflections are much improved. Now you have options to choose the update mode for planar reflection probes such as every frame, on enable or on demand. And the great news is that reflection probe now also supports smoothness. I have been waiting for this feature for a very long time. For the light mapping, they have added support for optics AI denoiser. It's a huge improvement over filtering option, especially on low sample counts and provide a solution for leaking and blurring problems. It can be combined with other filters to achieve even smoother light maps. By using the new denoiser, you can reduce sample counts substantially to achieve much faster bakes. It's currently only available on Windows and with compatible NVIDIA GPUs. Right now, you can only use this denoiser with progressive CPU light mapper. MIS or Multiple Importance Sampling for Environment is a new method for sampling the most important areas in CubeMap or HDRI. This technique avoids shooting a large number of GI rays into the hemisphere and instead focuses them on important areas such as bright spot like sun. They have also added new environment samples parameter in the lighting window. This value controls how many rays are traced directly into the environment for any light map texture. And by using the new optics denoiser, you can achieve even much smoother look. In this example, you can clearly see that now it's much easier to use HDR images for lighting in your scene. GPU light mapper is now available on Mac OS X and Linux and support double-sided GI flags on material and shadow casting and receiving on meshes. Light probe gizmos are now affected by exposure correction. This makes it easier to iterate on light probes when using HDRP and high intensity lighting. In the light map setting, now you can specify a maximum number of light maps generated for a specific group of objects. This is particularly useful when you are building games for mobile platform where resources are limited. The lighting calculation now uses pre-exposure. This means that exposure isn't applied at the end of the frame during post-processing but is applied to the lighting itself, which greatly improves precision and provides high value for lighting intensity such as for the sun. And finally, the most awaiting feature in Unity. Auto-generate is turned off by default in light map setting. Thanks a lot Unity for this cool new feature. There are still a few more improvements which you can find on Unity's blog post. Alright, so these are some of the major improvements in latest high definition render pipeline for Unity 2019.1. I will also try to make dedicated video on each topic of HDRP to explain them better. I also want to thank you Dimdu for his continuous Patreon support. And if you are still watching this video, which I guess only a few people do, then thank you so much for your time. If you really like my work and want to support this channel, then you can hit the like button or subscribe the channel or share your thought with me in comment section below. You can also join me on my discord server. I have given a link in the description. And finally, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.